Mark. Thank you so much to the ICD for having me once again in this beautiful city. Thank you, Mark, for giving me the privilege to address a welcome speech to this distinguished audience on behalf of the ICD. It is a great honor for us, for the ICD, to reunite for this event scholar, academicians, civil society practitioner, journalists, politicians, diplomatic representatives, and last but not least, we have here the 21st century represented by the youth as the best part of the meeting. Here we are, thanks to the ICD, more than one generation together, people from many parts of the world to celebrate once again the fall of the world, a world without walls and the reunification of Germany. That means that you are celebrating freedom and learning from there how to build peace, how to construct a world without wars and without wars. That should be easier now than 20 years ago because the world is very different now. Never before the world has been as rich as it is now. Never before the world have had on its hands the resources to defend and save every form of life and also to eradicate every form of violence and poverty. The paradox is that never before man holds on his mortal hands the power to abolish all forms of life. We are here to think and discuss how to construct the first way, to keep the first way and do close the second way forever. I have also been asked to talk this time about some current silent issues in Latin America. In reference, uh, references mainly to Venezuela, Bolivia, Peru, and of course, Ecuador. Talking about the Andean community of nations. Let me repeat what I told you last year. I come from Ecuador, a small country in the middle of the world. I speak for myself, but my voice could be that of almost 400 million South Americans that live in 8 million square kilometers, where, you, where, where we own a quarter of the world's fresh water, have rich mineral wealth energy and food, colossal mountains, sweet plains, endless deserts, deserts. We cross the equator to the north and reach the South Pole. We are bathed and nourished by the two largest ocean of the world. Nevertheless, some of, the, of our regions are the realm of inequality, and it seems as if a wall separates us from the rest of the world and separates us from the 21st century, a black hole on time and space. I'm pretty sure that you are waiting for me a very clear answer to these problems. I don't have it. I will try to 
focus myself in what I think may be the beginning of these problems. I will try to follow the very interesting conference that I just, uh, we were listening just before. I think that uh, we are in South America having superated the colonialism, we still are living a colonialist state. And I think that is the main problem that we are living. Not the only one, but probably is the beginning. Let me tell you, I think th the best way to do it, to make this focus, is uh, telling you about some anecdotes that I had to face as president of my country. I became president on April 20, 2005 until January 15, 2007. Before that, I was vice president for two years. When I had to, when I took the office, we were having a very serious problem. We have a political and economical tsunami in my country. What was happening is that we have a demolition. We had a demolition of all of our democratic institution. We do not have Supreme Court. The Congress was diminished to a minimal expression, was a capitus diminution. President had to fly out. I was vice president and I had to constitutionally assume the presidency. The army, police, and the army it, it, itself stay away from the problem. When I took office, I found all of these problems and all of the social and economical consequences of these. The schools without roof, hospitals without medication, and there was no money. I took office and I was the only power, was the pres president. I, I was only a cardiologist, I was not a politician, I don't, did not have a party, I was not supported by the army, I was just myself. So I asked to the Ministry of Finances about the current economical problems in Ecuador, we did not have money. What was the problem? Where was the money was? It was in many places, very strange places. And let me tell you what I found. I found, for example, that Ecuador was living mainly from the oil. But the contracts of the oil of Ecuador with the transnational companies was unbelievable, was a real injustice. I'll tell you how was that. The deal from Ecuador with this company, these companies was like this, was 82% for the transnational companies and 18 percent for the government of Ecuador. At that moment, the, when, the, when this deal was signed, 
by the previous president, the barrel of petroleum, of oil, was about $15 per barrel. So it was about $12.5 for the transnational and 2.5 for Ecuador. But the schools had no roof, the hospital had no medications, and the people was hunger and uh, was very unhappy and very angry. So then I found that uh, the worst part is that the cost of the barrel of oil had now, at that time, $60, it came after $100, it was $60. But the proportion was the same, it was 82% versus 18%. So the 12.5 that the transnational companies were receiving became almost $50, a tremendous accident that never came to my country. So I asked the companies, sit down with me, and let's review these contracts. And they decided not to do it, unless some legal issues that were going on from the justice, I had to stop it. And then we will accept to review the deals. And I said, I cannot do it. First of all, because I am restituting the Supreme Court and bringing back the judge, the justice, and everything. I'm only the president. I, I am not the one who directs that, uh, that uh, power, that function of the country. And besides, it's not, it's not uh, just, so I'm not going to do it. So he said, okay, you are not going to do it. We are, we are not going to review those deals. So. I had to respect that deal, and I did it. But I said, I'm going to respect the deal, but taking the price of references, the price of, of the barrel of oil at the moment that the deal was signed, it was $15, $15. And now it was 60 So I said, that remnant, the accident, I'm going to put something that is uh, just for everyone. I was asking to many people, I want to remind you, I'm a cardiologist. I'd have to decide how the price of the oil will be, just for everyone. And I receive always answers that I found that was hidden the interest of someone. So I decided 50-50. The remanent will be 50-50. 50 for you, 50 for Ecuador. And I did that. And that gave us immediately a tremendous amount of money. Yeah, in that year, we got over $2,000 million, which is about 25% uh, over the total budget of our country. And uh, immediately I did that, the government of the United States, not the transnational, the government, I was negotiating with them the free trade agreement. But then the government communicated to me that they will stop the conversation about the free trade agreement because of my decision about the oil. So what I told them is, uh, well, certainly we do not have colonialism anymore in Latin America, but certainly this is a proof that we still have a colonialist state. There is no other explanation to do that. Later on, a few months later, and th they stopped the, the free trade agreement conversation. 
Later on, I received a very nice visit from Professor Joseph Stiglitz. And we were talking in my office, and he told me, no, President, they are not stopping the conversation about the free trade agreement because of your oil decision. They are stopping this conversation because your decision to bring to the discussion table of the free trade agreement about intellectual property and agriculture. What I was proposing is do not accept in the United States to buy rice because Ecuador is an exporting country of rice but they wanted to obligate me to buy the rice, which is subsidized. I said, I cannot do it. And they were convincing Colombia to do the same, but Colombia is an exporter, is an imported, importer of rice. But the problem is that Colombia was importing rice from Ecuador. So in the moment that they sign with the United States, Ecuador will lose the, 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 the Colombia as a, as a buyer. Nevertheless, I could get an agreement with President Uribe, and President Uribe finally decided to divide, and still we could sell them some, some of our rice. But the most important thing I was discussing with the United States was intellectual property, mainly in regard to medicines, to drug medications. And that is the point in which the government of the United States, of President Bush, did not want to yield anything. And that was, according to Joseph Stiglitz, the reason why they stopped our discussion. And uh, I am saying again, so we are in the beginning of the 21st century, still living a colonialist state in Latin America. And uh, to prove the, 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 the good faith and the good motivation that the people in Latin America has was this. We were discussing with the European Union about our free trade agreement. And one of the conditions of the European Union was to negotiate the free trade agreement with the, with the Andean community nation together, not country by country. But at that moment, President Chavez decided to denounce the agreement, and uh, he went out of the community. So we were only four countries. The, the, the risk was that President Evo Morales will do the same that President Chavez. And then we were having a meeting in Vienna with the European community, and we came over here. And frankly, I talked with President Evo Morales, who was very open, and he decided to stay in the community and to negotiate together with the European community, which was a very good sign in this position, the predisposition that we had in Latin America. And immediately after that, according with the European Union and with Evo Morales, we asked President Morales to assume the presidency of the community. And then we did a meeting in Quito, in my country. And we did a very nice steps in order to, 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 to get this free trade agreement with the European Union. At that meeting in Quito, I received uh, a, a one day before, I received a call from President Evo Morales saying to me, you do not know, but President Chavez is going to assist. 
without, without announcement. So I decided to call President Chavez, not telling anything, just say hello, and I was pretty sure that he, if he wasn't coming to my country, he will tell me, as he did it. Listen, I'm, I'm going to go over there to say hello. And I asked him, please, don't do it. Don't do it, because you are going to diminish the presence of Morales as president of the community, and we would like you to come back to the community. We are going to find that you come back over here, but please, now it's, it's, it's very inconvenient. And he was agree. Nothing happened. Was agree. Just talking. Later on, I don't know what happens with the new government, but what I know is that there is some free trade agreement signing country by country and not with the, with the community. And I'm telling you these anecdotes as an example of uh, the colonialist states that we still have in Latin America. And uh, the tremendous, the arduous job, the work that we have to develop together to superate that, uh, that uh, problem. We're not having a colonialism, but we do have a colonialist state that has to do with everything, has to do with intellectual colonialist. Colonialist state has to do with, with modernity. Modernity is very good, but this is colonialist too. This is modernity. But we have to fight in some way creating new paradigms. From those new paradigms, we will create uh, the new leaders, the new actors, to propose a new culture that we do not have now. But we have to create those paradigms. The groups of interest trying that to, to stay in, the, in this state of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, colonialist, they try that we do not make the next step, which is education. Only education will allow the people to create new own paradigms. Thank you very much.